first thing that I'd like to do, actually, is uh, I also want to give condolences to our, our, our brown and black brothers and sisters in the UK right now. Uh, one of the, you know, one of the things that, uh, now we don't do this all the time, but one of the things that we like to do is we like to, uh, uh, we like to highlight the fact that we do not live on an island in terms of what affects us and what moves us. Uh, uh, trends that take place internationally, they may not trickle down directly, but they may be foreshadowing of what's to come and they may be foreshadowing of elements there. And one thing that I've said before and that I'll say again is that white supremacy isn't just a domestic issue, it is an international element. Uh, white supremacists have spent the last, uh, I would say since 9-11, but particularly in the last uh, 10 year decade or so, they have spent that time organizing uh, internationally, domestically. When we're talking about things like the, the, the interaction with Russia, when we're talking about things like the interaction of neo-Confederates and whatnot, you know, these things are not no longer confined to their borders. Uh, uh, the person who won, uh, uh, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Boris Johnson, uh, he's a close friend of Steve Bannon. Now, yeah. now, now, when we're talking about Steve Bannon, we're talking about somebody who was the proprietor of a website uh, called Breitbart, and Andrew Breitbart uh, one of the main things, one of his main claims to fame was actually demonizing people who were involved in the civil rights movement like Shirley Sherrod uh, and actually saying that they were anti-white when they were non-violent in practice. And I think that uh, uh, when we're looking at the trends that are happening internationally, what we're looking at is the, uh, uh, well, first of all, we're looking at the, uh, the way colonization has always been uh, international in its trajectory. Uh, the UK became rich based off of plundering the African continent. Uh, when we talk about things like the transatlantic slave trade, transatlantic isn't just a pretty word. It speaks to the involvement of European powers in the production and in the benefit of slaves. We're talking about France. We're talking about the Netherlands. We're talking about the UK. We're also talking about America. We're also talking about Spain and Portugal. These were places that ended up benefiting from the slave trade. So even though we are generally focused on racism directly, we can't let that uh, confine where, where, where we take information from and where we direct solidarity to. You're absolutely right. You know, um, so so let's not be confused. When I say we're on an island, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, just saying for our audience, saying for our. Right. You know, when I say we're on an island, I mean us as black folks. Right. And, and it includes all black people right. around the world. Right. And we cannot separate ourselves from black people around the world because this, uh, this white supremacy is not a local thing, it's a global thing. Right. And we have to deal with it accordingly. It, 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 make no mistakes, it is a global thing. Right. And we're being globally targeted. So we have to pay attention and be in solidarity with our brothers and sisters around the world. And we should also note that white supremacy has always had international designs. When we talk about the Confederacy, uh, the Confederacy actually wanted to expand slavery outward. They wanted to expand slavery to Mexico. Right. They wanted to expand slavery to Cuba. It wanted to span, expand slavery to Kansas. So, you know, uh, uh, but we, when Kansas was constituted as a territory. So, you know, uh, uh, when we're talking about white supremacy, we're necessarily talking about an element that is designed for a, a particular kind of totalizing plunder. It's, it wants to take everything from you and it wants to extract whatever labor and whatever value it can from you. And it's not just confined to you to your person. It goes out to your family, it goes out to your community, but it also goes out to where you're from, to your people, to the other African people in the diaspora. You're very right. You're very right, Antoine. Um, now we got all our little politics out of the way. Or, or, uh -oh. or let's, let's jump into some of these things that are going on that are affecting our black community um and, and again you know we have to we want to be mindful uh like i said we want to be mindful thoughtful and deliberate in our actions and in our words um we can no longer allow outside forces antoine to come into our community and dictate how we see one another uh you know we were talking on the way in this morning about a movie you saw uh, and how the uh, FBI infiltrated the uh, the Black Panthers, uh, and they infiltrate and they they sow seeds of discourse and misinformation, and this this continues till today, and we have to be very mindful not to feed into the nonsense that's being fed to us in our community, not to be fed, uh, not to be swayed by the the, uh, the criticisms that are put on. Uh, people from outside our community to be careful not to put them on ourselves. Like we said last week, you know, we can't take on the stereotypes and the baggage that that 
that our government and people at large will put on us. We're all criminals and we're dangerous and we're this and we're that. We are what we say we are. You hear me? We are what we say we are. And if you want, if you want that, you have to walk like that, act like that, and demand that. And, and like I said, you know, we can't continue to be uh, like Fallujah or Iraq or Iran, where we have these occupying forces in our communities. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, you, you were frowning up for a minute. You like that? I, I, I know where you're going. You like I know that. where you're going. Okay. You, you like that? We can't have. We can't. We can't continue. To allow these occupying forces to just come in like stormtroopers and accost us uh, at their will and pleasure, we have to be uh, we have to be proactive, not reactive. Uh, and again, and that's by always looking out for one another, Antoine. You know, this is not something that's going to happen overnight. This is not something that's going to be unlearned overnight. But we have to work on it now and work on it diligently. But one thing I do want to emphasize is that being pro-black doesn't necessarily mean that mean being non-ideological. I think that right, exactly. you, I think you have to understand where you want black people to go. There are a lot of black people that that simply want success for for, for the sake of without actually factoring in or critically analyzing what they may or may not be giving up. So you know we have to say affirmatively that we want degree of sovereignty that we want some degree that we that we want our, our our needs and our wants taken care of by our community and within our community and you have to you have to be that you have to say that outright i think that one of the things that we forget about things like co and pro is that it wasn't just white people infiltrating our communities it was white people actually using us to infiltrate our communities and driving wedges between us using either money blackmail or anything else to try to get us to, to betray ourselves from within and that, that, that's precisely how they did it. It wasn't a white face that was accosting you. It was a, it was a white face controlling a black face that was a, that was accosting you. So you know we want to be clear that that when we're talking about uh, outside forces coming into our community, uh, that that could be in terms of that could be in terms of intelligence agents coming in, but it could also be in terms of ideologies coming in. It could also be in terms of the way the economy is affected. It could also be in terms of how we end up conceptualizing our own condition. When we, when we end up buying into a message that um, that uh, that refuses to actually view or identify an enemy and an oppressor. We were actually following the oppressor's directive. Okay, and that that goes back to what the answer question you didn't want to ask last week. <laughs> we we there is an enemy, and we have to realize. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. No, and, well, and, I did. Mean, that's what I said. That's what no, I said. No, I'm saying no, because because this, you know, again, we are at war, and 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 war takes many forms. Um, what uh, the the uh, defense against infiltrators, defense against. Uh, our enemies, it starts with a mindset, it starts with uh, our planning and strategizing uh, and coming up with, like you said, what we want, uh, our, our end goals, you know. Uh, we can't just be uh, standing up for nothing. You know, we have to uh, always identify the things that we are, are fighting for, That's right? You know, and if we don't do that, then we're just, we, we're just kicking up rocks and kicking up dust. We're not... Uh, we're not uh, producing it. 